Hello folks, this is Jasa Motlek from the Case SARS project and I'm going to demonstrate today for you uh, one new scenario of the ECUS scheduler modulo. So the ECUS scheduler modulo is used for automation of your observatory. You can use it to automate the whole process from the startup until shutdown and use it just so you can automate the whole process and you get your data in the morning. So users are only supposed to use the ECUS scheduler when they are um, comfortable with using ECUS uh, in the regular normal way, uh, comfortable using the capture, the alignment, the focus modulo, etc. When everything is running well within this setup, then you can go ahead and use the scheduler to, to automate your observatory. So let's go ahead and load the file I um, had yesterday for the Heart Nebula or Sharpless 190. So as you can see here, um, in order to add an object or, or a job to this scheduler list, you need to specify a target, which in our case would be the Sharpless 190. And you need to sp specify the sequence file. And the sequence file is the file that contains the, the procedure we need to follow in order to capture the images. So these things include things like um, the number of images, uh, the type of uh, filter wheel to change to, uh, the prefixes, temperature settings, etc., etc. And here we have the modulus that we want to use in our job. So for example, here I selected that I want to use the focus modulo to perform autofocus. I want to use the alignment modulo to perform the asymmetry followed by the calibration and auto-guiding and then after all these procedures are complete we need to start the capture process. Here I'm also selecting the uh, weather enforcement and in this case that uh, because I have a weather station upstairs in my observatory which is by the way called Icarus Observatory and um, I just recently uh, completed its construction. Here the weather checkbox is in case the weather gets bad, so then, then uh, what happens is that ECOS goes into shutdown procedure to protect the observatory from adverse weather conditions. For each job, we have these um, startup conditions, constraint and completion conditions, and we need to start, uh, for, for our object here, we set the startup condition to now, so it should start as soon as possible. For the constraint, the only constraint I had that is um, its altitude should be larger than or higher than 40 degrees. And as, as long as this constraint is met, then the job uh, execution continues. If this constraint is violated, then the job is aborted and we move on to the next job in the queue. In our case, we only have one job, so it will just go to the shutdown procedure. The completion conditions specify when our job is supposed to end. So in the default uh, selection is sequence completion. So whenever the sequence file is completed, taking all the images, then we are completed. And down here we have two important uh, parts. We have the startup and shutdown procedures. These are one one time. So one time on, in, on startup and one time on shutdown. And here it's made of a startup, an optional startup script, and also these procedures, the common procedures, unparking dome, unparking mount, and uh, removing the dust cover. I have a remotely controlled dust cover. The startup script is unique to each observatory, and in my case, what it does is that it starts um, in the server on uh, the remote Raspberry Pi, it's running upstairs, and it also checks the weather and turn on the power to the equipment. So I just have a simple Python script here that can be reused actually by other users. And uh, depending on your observatory, you, you might have different uh, startup uh, script or you might need one or you might maybe not need one at all. After the startup script is completed successfully, we unpark the dome unpark the mount and remove the dust cover. After everything finishes or if the weather is bad, the shutdown, shutdown procedure is executed and it starts by executing these checkboxes here and then it moves to the shutdown script if we have one. And uh, I actually had do, uh, I do have a shutdown script. Let me edit it. So edit the job actually, you need to double click it 
and you'll find this the check mark here is displayed this is when you apply the changes so go, let me go ahead and select the shutdown procedure so my shutdown script is simply it will just uh, kill the remote indie uh, server and it will turn off the power to the equipment and so after I'm done with that I applied the job so without further ado let's go ahead and start the scheduler we only have one job and I think at this time it's a 54 degrees almost or a 55 so it's pretty high in the sky so let's go ahead and um, start the procedure it's probably gonna start it right now so the first thing that it does is that it finds the which shop to run and we have only one job so it will run that it's now executing the startup script the remote indie is running eco started and indie started and now it's unparking the dome here we are also getting the weather warning so weather is in the warning zone and I bet it's probably partly cloudy yep it's partly cloudy and this is the custom roof driver based on the indie roll-off driver Let's see where Ikimod is. So. Okay, now it is unparked. So now it's removing, I mean, opening the dust cover. And now it's slowing to the target. So it's it's slowing to the initial target coordinates which are specified here. And then after that it's running the autofocus procedure so now it's capturing the first frame in order to perform the autofocus before moving up to the alignment procedure so it takes a, a little bit to download the first frame about uh, 20 seconds to download the frame from the QSI Plus, since it's it's uh, it's over the network, it's probably gonna take another 10-15 seconds before it gets to ECOS. Okay, looks like we got our first frame, and now it will subframe it because I selected subframing here previously. Okay, and we have a star here, so now the autofocus procedure is running. And I set the tolerance to 1%, which is uh, a very high tolerance, actually. The lower the tolerance is, the higher the constraint is for a better focus. So now we have the autofocus com uh, procedure is complete. And if we go back to the scheduler, it's actually now solving the image. So it's going to the alignment phase. Let's go to the alignment module. It's already solved the image. And it already took another image of the sky to solve it to make sure that we are centered. And there we go. This this place here in this frame is where the telescope is located. And now we move to the actual to the actual requested coordinates as specified in the in this frame here in the fits file. Now we're running the post alignment focusing, so it will take another uh, because we actually removed the frame. The frame was here, and now it's centered over here we're running another focusing operation just to make sure that we get everything ready for the capture module
Okay. So there we go, the autofocus procedure. Okay, so this is now the first frame for the autofocus procedure. And now it's subframing. So the same process as we had before, but this time here. And the autofocus star is selected actually automatically by the procedure. Okay, so autofocus procedure is complete. And now we are running the calibration procedure for the auto guiding. And I see you can see that it selected the star automatically. And I think we have a, a good star here, but for some reason, um, I'm still working on the uh, selection algorithm for the uh, auto guiding frame, but it selected the star here. And now it's performing the calibration procedure. It's going to take a few extra seconds before it's complete if everything goes well. And ladies and gentlemen, this is all, as you can see, is done automatically. There is absolutely no input from my fa from uh, my side. I'm just looking at what's happening. So the eco scheduler is doing all of this automatically without any intervention. Actually, this is noise. You can see this is not a star. Yeah. This is a white pixel. Okay, I'm glad it then chose this one. So auto guiding started, and now the capture process started. And um, since we said the temperature should be negative 10, it's setting the temperature to negative 10 Celsius first. So here, all the settings here are the settings in the sequence file that we selected previously here. So all these settings, uh, the type of frame, the temperature settings, uh, the prefixes, the count. And for the purposes of this demo, I, I set the exposure only to 30 seconds in H alpha. So we could look at it. Here we can see that the um, it says autofocus is HF, if HFR larger than this value. This value was also automatically set in by ECUS from the final value we got here, which is 911. So this value is actually 2.5% larger than this value here. And after each exposure, ECOS will check if the HFR in the focus frame here exceeds this value, 934. And if it does exceed this value, then it will run a full-fledged autofocus operation. If it's less than this value, then it will continue capturing. So this is just to make sure we're really focused uh, during the whole imaging process. Here we have the guiding deviation, uh, which I set to uh, to be less than three arc seconds. If we go back to the guiding module, we can see that the guiding is running quite well. And if for so whatever reason, uh, actually I have a few clouds uh, outside, so for whatever reason, if the guiding deviation exceeds this value of three arc seconds, then it will abort the capture process and it will wait until the guiding deviations are below this value to resume the capture process again. So it looks like we'll have to wait a, a few more um, seconds. Oh, actually, there we go. It started the capture, actually. This is, uh, it, start, it started the capture procedure before getting to negative 10. And the reason for this is today I implemented a new feature which is to set the temperature threshold. It's at five, it's supposed to be at 0.1 by default. I was just testing it previously. So it's not supposed to start the capture process before it's the temperature, the target temperature is 0.1 Celsius before the, sorry, it's not supposed to start anything else in the, in the capture process before the target temperature is, is within point one of the requested temperature. So let me set it back again. 
Okay, so it captured the first image, and now we're waiting for its download. And again, it takes uh, um, about 20 to 30 seconds for uh, a full frame to download from the QSI. All right, so we got our first image here. And we can take a look at it. So this image, I mean, it's only 30 seconds. It's not really quite very visible, but you can see the hardener pillar here. Uh, let's go ahead and, and for comparison, uh, let's just open the uh, the frame that we selected previously, which is the center frame. And we can see it's almost pretty much the same frame. So this is the frame that we wanted to get, and this is the image that we just got right now. It's very close to it. And here, actually, it's run another autofocus operation, and this is another capture. And uh, this is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is the EQS um, scheduler module in progress. And we can see here that it's it it's a uh, it says that the calibration guiding in progress, capture in progress, and it will go until the whole thing is completed, and then it will go on shutdown execute the shutdown procedure. Uh, this is all still under development. I'm, I'm testing it under my observatory, but so far the results are promising. And it looks like um, building a robotic observatory for the amateur astronomer is now very possible under Linux. So if you uh, guys have any comments, please uh, let me know. And um, I'm looking for any proposals or suggestions for any particular cases that I'm perhaps not covering with the ECOS scheduler module. So that's uh, pretty much it. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and clear skies.